Hola, como esta? Uh, all right, enough of that fancy talk. So this section is devoted to optimizing or optimization. Uh, so sometimes we're going to want to find a maximum value or a minimum value. In this first example, we're going to try to find a minimum value. So the, the question is basically find two numbers whose difference is 100 and whose product is a minimum. So let's translate that real quick. Two numbers whose difference is 100. So like x minus y is 100, right? The difference is 100. And the product, x, y, I'll call that p for product, is supposed to be a minimum. So I need to find the minimum. Well, the good news is the same, we're going to basically use the same kind of procedures we used already, finding maxes and mins, find the critical values, and go ahead and, and, and figure out where that occurs and, and figure out if it's a max or a min. Um, the problem, of course, is, you know, with more than one variable, we got to do a little shenanigans to get this worked out. So the good news is they gave us a way to relate x and y, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So uh, this is going to be y equals what, x minus 100. So I'll plug that in for y. So x times x minus 100 equals p. So that's x squared equals 100x. I'm sorry, x squared minus 100x equals p. And that's what I'm trying to minimize. So I'm going to take the derivative. P prime. I'm going to take it with respect to x on purpose because I'm, these are the variables I'm using. I'm not doing it with respect to time like when we did related rates. So this is simply 2x minus 100. Um, if you had solved this for x instead of y, it would be the same idea, but you just, you'll have your p prime in terms of y. Either way, to get a critical value, we need to set that equal to 0. So that means 2x equals 100, so x would have to be 50. Okay. Um, so there's our critical value at 50. We can check that. And let's see, so at 50, if I'm less than 50, like 1, right, I'm negative. If I'm more than 50, like 51 or whatever, it doesn't matter, you're going to end up positive. And this is for P prime, so you're going from negative to positive for your P prime. That means my function's going from decreasing to increasing, meaning I do have a minimum at 50. And if X is 50, well, I can plug that back in here. If X is 50, well, then Y would have to be, what, negative 50? Let's see if that makes sense. 50 minus negative 50 is 100. That's right. And then 50 times 50 is whatever, 2,500. And if you check any other numbers that have a difference of 100, you're going to get values that are bigger than 50. Okay? Um, that's basically it. That's how you do it. If you want, you certainly could uh, go ahead and graph it. So let's take a look here. Let's see if I get that on there. Uh, so what's my function? My function is x times x minus 100. So x times x minus 100. And uh, well, I know my values, right? I have some pretty big values here for, for uh, x. So I'm going to go, let's go, let's just go 0 to 100 for now. And then I'll do a zoom fit. See what happens. Oh, well, that worked out kind of nicely. Uh, you could have, obviously, if you started with a standard window, you'd see that there's more to it than that. So I'm looking at my original graph. Well, it certainly looks like that's where I'm going to bottom out. Uh, well, I could just calculate a value, I guess, calculate the value at 50. And there you can see the actual minimum value is negative 2,500. It didn't actually ask me for the minimum value. It just said find where it happens. Um, but, it, but still, here you can quickly check it. You could also graph the derivative, find where, you know, it crosses the x-axis and go from there. All the same stuff. You'll see it's, it's really no different than what we've already done. Just now we're applying it. Okay, so there's your intro. I'm going to do some more examples for you, but hopefully that'll at least give you an idea of what's going on, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.